From the world of AV programming and control with James King, I'm Steve Greenblatt, and this is Ask the Programmer. James, it's great to be back with you. And I think we're going to talk about something that's uh, a little interesting today. So I'm looking forward to it. How are you doing? Oh, I'm doing great, Steve. And yeah, I think this is, would be a good topic to talk about. And hopefully, hopefully our listeners uh, agree as well. But how are you doing? I'm doing well. I, uh, you know, always, uh, always enjoy these conversations. And sometimes we don't know what direction they're going to head in. And that's, that's why we're doing this. So it's uh, looking forward to it. Um, the, what, what we had planned for today, you know, we, we talk a lot about um, source code. Um, and there's also a lot of talk about um, open source. And there's a lot of uh, code sharing. There's a lot of ways to um, find code on the internet. Um, how does all of that apply to the AV world? Uh, how, how much should there be publicly available code? How much should people share their code? Obviously, sometimes what their code is not necessarily something that they have the full, full rights to in terms of it being property of an employer or property of a client or so on and so forth. But um, just thought it would be interesting to talk about this a little bit. So, so James, I'll, I'll let you um, know you have some some thoughts about it. So uh, let's start there. So, yeah, I, I definitely have some thoughts on this. And it's almost my thoughts are a mixed bag. Um, because the way I look at it is you have the notion of, okay, if I share my code out to the world, well, they even say that we're putting out there in the world, are they going to use it correctly? Do they know how to use it and all that stuff? And, you know, when you do that, you're not getting paid for it. I mean, when you come down to it, you really want to be uh, making money doing your work. And if the work's out there and going out there free, is there really a uh, benefit to it? Um, another negative kind of way I look at it, and I'll admit this is more of a, selfish embarrassment uh, level is I always think people are going to look at my code and find out that he has no clue what he's doing. <laughs> and um, so that's always my fear is someone actually look at my code and be like, he has no clue what he's doing. Why is he even here? Um, and then also I'll admit I'm not the best speller and grammar person. And so my code variables might be spelt wrong or written wrong um and then i don't want that getting out there either now the benefit of sharing the code is that you can learn from other people you can learn from other programmers and see what they're doing and you know be like oh i didn't think about doing it that way and applying it or you might be stuck and for example you're trying to turn on a Panasonic projector, but you only have experience in uh, Epson. And then you go out to someone who does Panasonic and you get their code. Now you can get going and get the project done um, and moving forward. So it's definitely, uh, there's beneficials to it as well. I, I like where you're going with it because I think you're, it, it's a great way to argue or, or um, present the pros and cons. And, and there's certainly, I would call it a liability in putting code out um, because who, who then is responsible for it. And when somebody makes changes, uh, are they, is that going to be a reflection on you because they changed what you gave them and now it doesn't work or it doesn't, or it's not, um, it's not, can't be troubleshot. You know, and one of the things, so we we write modules and drivers and plugins, and a lot of times we have to keep those locked, not because we don't well, we have some magic inside, but more so is that we have to know what we're troubleshooting. And if we gave it to somebody and left it open and they made changes to it, then we don't know what they may have introduced that we need that need to be troubleshot, whereas we know what we released and we know that that works or at least it it um we know how to to um find 
issues if somebody reports them. So, so that that's one way of looking at it. Um, but I like what you said too. How else do you learn um, other than seeing how other people have done, have written code or have done things? And and I know as a fact, um, in this day and age, that that most software developers they they learn by googling and they learn by seeing what you could find online and and how to do things and um, because really the magic isn't necessarily on um, writing the best code in my opinion writing they, like we, you you learn in school how to write optimized code and and all of these things and the, and there's a place for that I'm sure but in in our world I think it's more so we have to write reliable code and we also want to make sure that the challenge is more about addressing the needs of the client and, and the project rather than necessarily um, doing something uh, a certain way or, or um, being able to prove that I could write the best code, if you will. Yeah, you definitely hit on a couple of good ones. I, I kind of chuckled when you said uh, us programmers use Google a lot because when I'm at home working on my projects and I do get stuck in a code saying, yeah, I'm hitting Google and my wife will walk by and she's like, you're not coding. You're just Googling the answer. Like, you don't know what you're doing. Like, she always rides me about that. And I was like, oh, my response is yes, I Google, but I know how to take the information I get from Google and actually apply it to what I'm doing. But it's, it's funny that you mentioned that we do Google a lot. Um, I think all programmers do. I'm sure all our listeners are chuckling at their radio right now about that. Um, but also that whole being reliable, like, yeah, I, it kind of goes that whole notion is, okay, if I provide you this code and you make changes, who's responsible then? Like, if it doesn't work, is it me or is it you who made the changes? Um, I never even really look into that aspect of it because I always thought, okay, I have my programming mind on is I'm taking someone else's code and it's not working. Either I'm not going to use their code, I'm going to rip my own, or it's something I need to fix now, like my end. Um, but yeah, I'm sure there's others who will be like, well, sorry, I got this from Steve. I made this change. It's not working. Steve, you need to go and fix this. Exactly right. And and honestly, it becomes really hard to troubleshoot. And and I, I this I know from experience that um, I have back in the day given somebody maybe a version of a program or or module, whatever it might be. They didn't tell me that they made changes and saved it to something else. And I was trying to troubleshoot with the version that I have, and that that can be extremely frustrating, <laughs> and 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 it, it, it no, nobody ends up being um, winning in the end there. Yes, no one does, and that kind of goes about our last conversation talking about code repositories and making notes in what changes are happening. So you're on the right version and you know what changes happen. But yeah, now to say on topic here is I, I can see that being a pain. If we're sitting there trying to troubleshoot, it's now you're figuring out who who's at fault and where the problem actually lies. Is it the provided code? Is it the modified code? Um, and then it kind of reminds me of a a situation I, I can't I was told funny enough is nothing with programming. I actually I had a conversation with uh, a well known person in the industry about AB over IP and why manufacturers, you know, they don't use the same protocols and they don't have a standard and like you can't take uh, box A and have it talk to box B and all that stuff. And they brought up a good portion was okay if you buy box a and you buy box b and yes they're using the same protocol to talk to each other but they're not working who's responsible and their response was whoever answers the phone right yeah 
And that's kind of the same as it with the programming. It's like, okay, if the programming is not working, if you're using someone else's code or yours, who's at fault? It's, uh, who needs to fix it? Probably the person who cares the most about that program to fix it. And, and the problem, and maybe even more so, the one that's that's benefiting from it. And and I, you know, the, the thing I was going to bring up, you know, to 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 maybe uh, finalize or, or or wrap the conversation up a bit is um, one thing that is could be concerning is is that if so you are generous and give out code, and then somebody then resells it as theirs, or or it doesn't give you um, credit or, or is, you know, is, is unfairly using it. That's something always to be careful about and that we, uh, th there has to be a, a little bit of, um, of, of respect and you, you have to really understand who you're, you're giving code out to. Yeah, I, I agree. That can definitely, uh, be challenging. I mean, Again, this was a TV show, so it's all done Hollywood style, and but that does pretend to be out there. There was a show I was watching where this one character he wrote a piece of code, and it was a good piece of code and stuff. But someone took it and modified it for a bad thing, but his signature was on it. So when that happened, he got blamed for it even though he didn't do it. Someone used his code, modified for malicious attempt, and actually was causing problems. Um, but again, if our names are on it, it's going to come back to us. And like you said, if someone takes it, package it, and sells it, they're making money off of your work that you're not getting credit for and getting money for. Absolutely right. I am... And I'll throw it out to our audience. Hopefully this is an episode that made you think a little bit. And I hope that we got some people that were nodding their head and other people that may have been um, maybe speaking uh, to, to, to their headphones as they were listening. But, uh, but I hopefully it, it made for some good conversation and some good food for thought. But, but please reach out to us and let us know what you think about this and, and, and what are, what are your takes on it? Cause I think as a community and, and as, as programmers go, we, we need to be talking about these things more and there needs to be um, probably more collaboration um, than there is uh, competition when it comes to how do we better ourselves in the industry? So um, just, just something to think about and um, we're curious to hear what you, what your thoughts are. Um, James, how, how do people get in touch with you? And um, well, if let me know if there's uh, anything else you wanted to share uh, on this conversation. I uh, know I think this kind of wraps up the conversation. Uh, but again, you can get a hold of me on Twitter, AV underscore James King, uh, especially on Sunday mornings with the AV and the AM. Norma, Steve, and I are there conversing. Uh, you can definitely reach out to the AV programming pod. Um, Twitter account as well that Steve and I run. Uh, so I'm out there. Google me. You'll find me. Absolutely. And you can reach me at Steve Greenblatt on social media. Uh, my company, Control Concepts at controlconcepts.net. Um, but but we definitely like to hear from you and uh, like to know uh, what your thoughts are about these uh, topics and like to cover some more that uh, may, maybe are um, or not necessarily the the uh, well, only one perspective or or only one um, avenue to go down. Um, you know, conversation is a good thing and um, keeps us all challenged and keeps us all uh, on our toes. So uh, please reach out and let us know what you think and and what you want to hear more about. You can get this podcast on uh, Apple and Google as well as the video version on YouTube. So check them all out. And uh, we look forward to hearing from you. With that, this has been Ask the Programmer.